uh, that best describes what Russia is going through at the moment, its instability. For a society that was stable for a long time, the uncertainty of capitalism and the critical question of how to keep ahead of spiralling inflation has come as a shock. People who always knew that the state would provide for them have been left to fend for themselves. Irene Ullman went to Moscow to explore how the market economy is changing people's lives. Moscow, a city of nine million, is the largest Russian city. It's the center of tradition and power. And now that Russia's looking to the West for a new direction, it's still Moscow that sets the tone. When change comes, it comes here first. One of the visible signs of change is the growth of retail trade. Moscow is teeming with commercial activity. And just off one of the busiest streets lies one of the oldest surviving quarters of Moscow, the Arbat. Eight years ago, in the early days of Glasnost, a mall filled with street lamps was installed here. The Arbat attracted artists and buskers, and of course, salespersons of cheap souvenirs. But what was originally an expression of democracy and freedom turned into a market with an unromantic, nasty side to it. That came to an abrupt end a few weeks ago when the Moscow government banned all unlicensed trade from Old Arbat. The reason given initially was a temporary closure of the mall for spring cleaning. But the cleanup had deeper implications. The government had decided to regain control of illegal traders. Anton, a 21-year-old university student, was one of 3,000 or so money makers told not to come back. He still can't believe the ban is permanent. As he sees it, it's become a way of life for too many people. But for many local residents, trade in general and Arba trade in particular has not been easy to understand or to accept. For them, the market is an alien force that came like a hurricane and turned society and its values upside down. They might agree that the market is a necessity, but its ugly side frightens them. Professor Aaron Belkin set up a clinic in the old Arbat seven years ago and saw the retail trade develop. He is well aware of the psychological factors that have split society. Some make money, others will always equate selling with cheating. Тут можно понять, что в России всегда было отношение к спекуляции весьма негативное. Тут упирается в психологию людей. Новые экономические отношения, которые возникают в стране, непонятны людям. Они вызывают у них гнев. Как это можно торговать тем, что ты не произвел? Это всегда считалось уголовно наказуемым. И представьте теперь шок, который наступает у людей. То, что было уголовно наказуемым, вдруг становится вполне реальным. Edward's first experience of making money was here, on the Arbat, but he's since moved on to other business. A growing number of young professionals are now resorting to profiteering in order to catch up with the rising cost of living. The trend is to buy in bulk, anything at all, and sell it. Edward has been doing it for years. Illegally, of course. Bribes are still cheaper than taxes. Работал я во многих местах. У меня огромное количество профессий. Такой универсальный человек. Вот. Но нигде не было интересно. А вот на себя мне поработать было интересно и хотелось это сделать. Мне этого добиться, в принципе. Сейчас я уже, можно сказать, профессионал мелкого бизнеса. 
This is trade as many Moscovites see it. It's one of the reasons why many of them complain that reforms have turned a once great capital into a huge flea market. Outside the Kiev railway station, not far from the center of Moscow, buying and selling never stops. Behind the scenes are what Russians call the mafia, meaning organizers or middlemen behind the apparently simple exchange of money and goods. The amount paid for a trading spot depends on the place, on who the payment goes to, on the time of day, the season, the inflation rate, and on the rate of the dollar. A step further from street trade is the latest invention of retail commerce, the kiosk. No longer just a stall, but not quite a shop yet. There are over 4,000 such kiosks in Moscow. Only two years ago they didn't exist. Now they're everywhere. They sell a mixture of Western and East European goods. Some, we were warned, of dubious quality. But the bulk of the merchandise are alcoholic drinks and cigarettes. Rubles are accepted, although prices are high. But the aim is to make dollars. The US dollar is the only measure of stability here today. Лотков была совершенно неожиданным мероприятием. И еще много таких вещей может произойти, поэтому люди стараются быть скромнее. Скромнее надо быть. Пока. Всю торговлю, которая здесь была, почему ее убрали, как вы думаете? Не знаю, возможно, кто-то кому-то что-то вовремя не заплатил. Вы думаете, что это именно так, что это не, не чистка перед летом, как Скорее сказали милиционеры? Скорее всего. Официально у нас всегда все бывает очень правильно. Чистка это нужно, это очень нужно, я считаю, да. Но скорее всего деньга, дело просто в деньгах. Russians have traditionally taken the corruption of officials for granted, and in that respect little has changed. But Moscow has a young government with the difficult task of pushing reform through. The state of war between the executive and the legislature has created a volatile political situation. A corrupt government would undermine the very fragile trust that the people have given to it. The chief administrator of the Arbat district, Vladimir Golovanov, denies the corruption at an official level. He doesn't, however, deny the existence of powerful organized crime. He was initially reluctant to be interviewed for fear of retaliation. He implemented the Arbat cleanup. Правительство Москвы провозглашало одним из своих основных лозунгов – это наведение порядка на территории Москвы. Но это один из, вы знаете, таких вот ключевых моментов, потому что Арбат, я считаю, это сердце столицы. Он как бы лакмусовая бумажка тех процессов, которые происходят у нас в столице. Но вам не кажется, что в результате подобной чистки люди теряют торговлю, теряют доверие к, к реформам? Понимаете, лю любые действия, они должны все-таки э, уйти от хаоса и прийти к цивилизованному такому виду. Конечно, в перспективе Арбат должен быть э, местом, где любили бы отдыхать, и как жители столицы, и гости столицы. Первые этажи должны быть полностью превращены вот в такой центр, куда люди будут с удовольствием идти отдыхать, э, осуществлять покупки. Там должна быть создана та инфраструктура, без которой не может существовать these are ambitious plans, but not impossible. The money is to come from the budding local enterprise and from foreign investors. The Arbat soup kitchen was created last February with donations from private enterprise. Access is limited to 200 pensioners whose income is below the poverty line. Half of the Arbat population of 10,000 are old and needy. But Olga Kutsilova, who supplies food for the soup kitchen, is no better off than some of the pensioners. The market is where she buys cucumbers for the old people, or whatever else they can't afford to buy themselves. She's a single mother struggling to survive, and as far as she's concerned, free market and reform are, at best, meaningless words. <laughs> А когда было лучше? 
Для меня лучше это времена застой. Те времена я вспоминаю как голубые времена. Лично для меня были, для моей семьи. Like many people in the district, Olga lives in a communal flat. Yet for some local residents, there may be a way out, once again with the help of private enterprise. The Arbat is a prime target for business people. 80% of the area is planned for reconstruction. Old residents are keen to leave their communal flats. Some who've managed to privatize their rooms are offered handsome sums or even apartments elsewhere in Moscow. Попозже получится что-нибудь. Надеемся на это. It used to be much easier to tell the difference between a foreigner and a local. But Moscow is changing. They still say here that no matter how you dress a Russian, he or she will still look like a Russian. But here, on Old Darbat Street, it's becoming obvious that those people who have the means to dress in a Western way are beginning to erase those hypothetical differences. The change may be cosmetic, but it's there. <laughs> В принципе, хочется определенности, благосостояния такого, чтобы можно было все-таки жить, не сводить концы с концами, как это часто делали и родители наши, и многие, многие из тех, кто жил в Советском Союзе. А все-таки, чтобы человек мог каким-то своим желанием все-таки давать какое-то выражение, хотя бы даже самым маленьким, хотя бы даже... Потому что он мог бы все позволить раз в неделю сходить в ресторан с любимой девушкой. Или поехать раз в год отдохнуть в Грецию, например, или куда-то еще. Сейчас это уже более выполнимо стало. В этом, я глав... думаю, главное преимущество, в принципе, того, что сейчас делаем мы, того, что сейчас делает Россия. The Arbat marks its 500th anniversary this year. It may be that the removal of stalls and kiosks marks the start of another stage of reform. Elsewhere in the city, the kiosks are feeling the pinch. They'll all have to pay for a license as well as a percentage of their annual income. This may be an incentive for the kiosk operators to establish more permanent businesses. The authorities are replacing some of the older, shabbier kiosks with a new model, and some of them have almost become shops. On the new Arbat Avenue, they look like they're here to stay, at least until these little capitalists can move into the state shops once they are privatized. Until then, the kiosks remain a symbol of transition at the mercy of the powers that be. Irene Ullman reporting.